Today's going to be a very emotional episode because we get to meet our new fullbacks. Oh, I'm so excited and goodness me, we need them. This has all been going a little bit wrong. Hello and welcome to Club 5, part 3 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin coming up on today's episode. We have massively important home games against top of the table Man United and relegation threatened Sunderland. Since you were last with me, as you can see, we've proven we only beat top of the table teams from Manchester. So we should win at least one of those games today. Fingers crossed. But there is an awful lot of defeats in there. And frustratingly, a lot of these games are us conceding late goals and being exposed for our lack of fullbacks. So... We do need our fullbacks. We're not going to have them for the Man United game. They will turn up for the Sunderland game. All the transfers are already arranged, so I can show you who they are now. Anthony Ralston comes in from Aberdeen. Um, he's costing us, how much is he costing us? £3.6 million. He's previously of Celtic, been at Aberdeen for a little while. Um, he is a right back. Um, Vincent Collet, Collette is another right back, 24 years old. Bit more attacking than the other fella. Comes in from Amiens. Um, he is costing us £4.4 .4 million. Pounds, and he's been with them for the last couple of years previously with Mets. And then on the other side, we have a left back, Jordan Amavi. 30 years old now, nice and attacking as well. He's costing us a little bit more. Um, he's costing £11.5 million, coming in from Bournemouth, where he's been for quite a long time, previously of Marseille, Villa and Nice. So we have some fullbacks coming in, and we also still have money to spend after signing. We've got a million pounds a week of wage budget, which is ridiculous, plus £12 million to spend. I don't think we need another left-back, because we've got a lot of centre-backs who can play left-back. So I'm I'm kind of trying to decide where to spend the rest of my money. I think central midfield maybe is an area that we need to strengthen. We are strong in most areas, though. We're just a little bit let down by the lack of fullbacks and the lack of strength in depth in midfield. Obviously, Storaro can go back into the midfield uh, once we bring the two new right-backs in. We're really suffering from the injury to Ethan Galbraith, who's got a torn hamstring. He's been out for quite I mean he's been out for five weeks already another three to seven weeks he has he was an absolutely key player as a deep line playmaker in our midfield before his injury and you can kind of I mean it doesn't quite coincide he got injured where did he get injured about here so I guess we were at that we were still at the point where we were winning our home games losing our away games he got injured and we just started losing all of the games apart from Man City so I think he's been a big miss we might bring in another central midfielder. I don't think we need any attacking players. We've got some wide players that we'd like to move on. Um, there's a few players like, um, I don't know who he is, Zakini, uh, Riyad Mahrez, um, this guy, Ar Aravalo. They all need to be moved. He can play right back. Oh, it's because I've been training him to play right back. I remember now. Um, yeah, he's been training... He's been moved to wing. I've been tra no. He is. We're training him to play wing back at right back. Um. So he's actually got defender. Right. I mean, we might keep him around. Is he a better option than Storaro? Could that be a way to get Storaro back into the midfield? Hmm. I wonder if we do that. <laughs> it's not great. And then Storaro. I don't even know what position in midfield Storaro wants to play. What is he? What are you, Storaro? You're a ball winning the field. We don't really use them. You know what? Go back from whence you came and get the other fella back in. Who was him? Who, I mean, I don't, this guy's not very good. Grant Amargy Man. He's a bit of a stopgap while we wait for Galbraith to be fit again. So anyway, this is the team we're putting out for the Man United game. I can hear you all screaming, Kev, put this ball, ball winning midfielder in and play your right back at right. No. No, 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 no. Uh, we've got Svilar in goal. A back four of Panzo, Diaz, Oliveira and Storaro. Imbula, Marjaman and Suto in midfield. Suto training to be a central midfielder. He's getting there. Look. He's got midfield centre on his little uh, d position description thing. I'd quite happily sell him on. If someone wants to give us what we paid for him, I'd take £24.5 million pounds for him in a heartbeat and reinvest in a, re reinvest in a proper central midfielder. For now, he'll just play out of position in central midfield. Possibly part of the problem as well. Um, and then Adonis is in behind Miller and Gardner. We've got a few injuries up front as well. If we just narrow this down to our strikers. Um, where is he? Cesar was injured, although he's now fit again. Interesting. It might be time, perhaps not right now. Uh, but he was injured. But it looks like everyone else is now fit again. 
So we might actually get... Mm, should we get him back on the bench? Say I probably should have left it filtered. Where is he? Where's C Cesar? Caesar? I've got to filter it again, haven't I? Can anyone see him? Where is he? No? No idea. Right, hold on. Hold your, hold the phone, everybody. Uh, right, get him on the bench. He's on the... For Jiminy Cricket. Right. I record. I pricked this team three days ago. Goodness me. This is what I get for having to record videos in advance for half term. Where's my coffee? I need to compose myself. Who we play? Manchester United. Oh, oh, they've got the car up front. We'll be fine. Um, we'll be. Um, yeah. Not I. Yeah, momentum's cracking. Right. Are we at home? We are at home. Let's see. I mean, we beat Man City. Although Man City are down in eighth place. So they weren't quite a top of the table Manchester team like I described them as. They were a team who were already in free fall. And I think we were probably responsible for their manager getting sacked. Man United, however, are comfortably top of the league. Well, two points over Liverpool. We could actually knock them off the top of the league today if we beat them and Liverpool win. I'm interested to see that we're in, what, 2023 at this point? And Lukaku is still first choice lone striker for Manchester United. I would have expected them to have brought someone better in at some point in that time, especially if they're challenging for the league. What did Gardner just do? That was just... I, just, I mean, there's no, no excuse, no explanation for that. For those of you who are inevitably panicking about the fact that we've gone from fourth place when I arrived down to 14th place now with all that red on there, I know I probably should have done a 3-4-3. Three, three. Looking back now... I think I probably would do a three four three for the plat for the period from when I arrived through to the transfer window because it wouldn't have been any worse than it was using my own four three one two. But we've we've taken that on board. It's a learning point. There's not a lot we can do about it now. We're certainly not going to switch to it at this point because we're training up and getting familiarity with our four three one two. And at least doing it my way, when the fullbacks do arrive and maybe another central midfielder does arrive. The rest of the squad are going to be familiar with playing in this way. Not necessarily playing this way successfully, but a lot of the time we're creating a lot of chances in games and actually finding that we're missing out to late goals where we've been a little bit sloppy or teams that have kind of exploited us. I've still got this cough. It's ridiculous. At what point am I supposed to go to the doctors about this cough? Oh, it's only when I turn the camera on as well. I, th I, I remember talking about this this time last year. I think I might be allergic to the sponge on my microphone cover. Because any time I get near it, the cough starts to reappear. I've gone all day today without coughing. Right, Gardner squares it to Adonis. That is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. When things are going our way, and they will, when things start to go our way, we go 1-0 up there because... Adonis doesn't miss an absolute sitter set up on a plate for him. But for whatever reason, heads are down at the moment and we are missing chances that we would normally score. So it's a bit frustrating. My dog's barking one minute. But taking the positives out of this game, I know they're about to take the positives away from me. Oh. As it stands right now, even though they've had three clear cut chances to our none, it is still nil nil going into half time. And it's top of the table, Manchester United. That is a massive positive and gives us the opportunity to go out there in this second half and just nick a goal from somewhere. If we can if we can rob a goal, I don't understand how we've only got a half chance. So they really try to tell me that that Adonis miss was a half chance, not a clear cut chance. I'm also getting fed up with my players getting sent off, by the way. We must have had six red cards over the course of that run of game, maybe eight or nine games where we were losing them all. Well, we were losing them all because we were down to 10 men a lot of the time. And it was very upsetting. Right, it's closing in on substitution o'clock. We have got Cesar on the bench, who was in great form before he got injured. In fact, Gardner has taken a little bit of a knock, so he can come off straight away. Suto not playing well, so Onomar can come on for him. And then it's... Miller's not playing well either, but I don't want to make three substitutions straight away. I feel like it probably is Jesse Lingard who needs to come on against his old club just to see if there's some romance to be had. I'm always keen to uh, help romance along its way. But who do we bring him on for? Marjaman's not having a very good game, but who do we drop back in mid... I mean, Lingard's not going to play there. We could do that, I suppose. Or would they be better that way around? That seems to work. Right, let's have... 
Lingard running deep from midfield. See if he can grab that. Oh, here's Cesar with a free kick. And it whistles just over the top of the crossbar. We've still not had a clear-cut chance in this game. Although we have had twice as many shots as Man United. But we're just shooting from range. It's that same old thing. When a Kev team is learning the tactic, we just shoot from range a lot. And we get used to it eventually and start scoring. But at the moment, not so much. Right, so here comes the winner. That is a big miss. Four minutes left for one of us to grab a winner. We all know which one's more likely. We've had so many late goals go against us recently. But with 30 seconds to go, I think we might be about to hold top of the table Man United to a very respectable draw. Here comes the winner. I mean, this is going to be disgusting. <sighs> Whistle's over. That is full time. And the next time you see Leicester City, they should have actual fullbacks in the team. Well, the new players have arrived, but a little learning point. Um, before, when you hit auto register to get them in your squad, just check who's being unregistered before you confirm, especially if they arrive on match day. Because somehow, my assistant manager, presumably, has deemed it a sensible thing to do to unregister Marjman and Imbula, who both started the last game in the middle of our midfield. Plus, of the new boys, um, Amavi's fit to come in at left back. However, um, Collett is injured. He's going to be out for five days. And tougher fella, Ralston, he needs a rest. So no, we haven't still don't have a right back. We're down two midfielders and we're still playing a midfielder at right back. And Marvi comes in at left back. We've got Mares playing as a deep line playmaker in central midfield. Because we have no other midfield players. And Onomar comes back into the midfield as well with Suto moving over to the other side. This is a total mess. Oh, and Cesar comes in up front. Uh, because the other guy who was up there before, he's now picked up an injury. It's all going very, very wrong. Let's give out a squad number to Amavi. At least he gets a number three. We've got a sensible squad number for a left back. And hopefully we can somehow find a way to drag our way past Sunderland. We need a win. We're desperate for a win. And hopefully having a proper left back in the team will be the key to our success. It is still a bit of a problem that we don't have a proper right back though. And of course Sunderland deciding to attack down that side. Because that's just a sensible thing to do really. Come down the side where we don't have any defenders. Right, there you go. Amavi's first touch. And it's brilliant piece, piece of fullback play. Storaro crosses in. It's cleared. Mares, this is the first appearance he's had since I've been at the club. And I'm playing him in a holding midfield role. He's old. He should be. Rude Hullet used to play as a defensive midfielder late on in his career. Attacking players can do that. If they're good enough, they can play as a deep line playmaker as they get old. Not sure Riyad Mahrez is necessarily in the same class as Rude Hullet, but he needs to figure it out. This is his opportunity to show me that he might be. Mahrez to Suto to Adonis. Onomar. Back to. I mean, Adonis is just having it. He's just being terrible. He's supposed to be one of our better players, but he's just not very good. Suto, what's he going to do? Finds the run of Miller. We have got Cesar in the middle and Onomar, but he misses. And, I mean, we've created a couple of decent chances early on. Things are looking promising. We're playing well at the moment. 68, 69% of the possession in these first 10 minutes. Oliveira just over the bar. And Sunderland are yet to have a shot. We've had five. Crucially, though, we've missed all five of them because we just seem to have lost any ability we had to attack the ball and oh they've hit the crossbar I mean it's dirty it's horrible what this game is doing to me at the moment oh I need my new right backs I, I might go and sign two more two in the squad isn't enough I don't thing is I don't know how I get Imbula back in the squad and Marjiman I think the time has come we need to bin off these wingers who are just knocking around the place they're not doing anything. We've got about eight of them. Let's get rid of them. Get them out of the squad. And hopefully that'll be the owners they need to go and find themselves a new club. Suto! He can hear me talking about bin binning off wingers. And he decides to grab his first goal for the club to put us 1-0 up on the 36-minute mark. We'll have a look at the replay. And then we'll have a look at what that does to the league table. Hopefully, starts to move us back up towards mid-table. Remember, our uh, board expectation is just that we finish uh, in a position above relegation. We just have to avoid relegation. Uh, the, the media are predicting us 14th place finish, I think. So, we're pretty much on par at the moment as far as the media are concerned. We're outperforming what the board are looking for from us. But 
I can't get away from the fact that we do seem to have a really talented squad and we were in fourth place when I arrived. Um, right, as it stands right now, we're up to 12th place, 25 points from our first 19 games. We should be safe to make it through for, through to the summer. Things have to go spectacularly wrong for us to find ourselves in a relegation battle at this point. Mares loses out on the ball, though. He was far too far forward as well. He's supposed to be our deep line playmaker on defend. What's he doing? Getting in positions where he can lose the ball there. But Amavi intercepts proper fullback. Look, he's t started a counter attack because he's played at fullback before and it led to us getting our second goal. That was all down to the £11 million pounds we just spent on the saviour of Leicester City, Jordan Amavi. It is Jordan, isn't it? Amavi, Amavi. I don't know what his first name is. I think it's Jordan. But I don't want to offend him by getting it wrong. So I'll just say his surname twice. And Suto now finds himself on a hat trick. Perhaps he prefers the left-hand side of central midfield. I mean, Carrillero is the position we've been training him for. And then we sort of rotate whether we play him as a Carrillero or a Mazala. As far as I'm concerned, they're very similar positions. If he's training for one, he should be able to do both. But perhaps he's been practising whatever he's doing today from the Carrillero position. Right, Onomar to Adonis. Can he show me he's not rubbish? Well, he's won us a penalty. And Suto is taking it and has the opportunity on the day I announce I'm binning off the wingers. Suto, a winger, has the opportunity to grab a hat-trick. And he does. And that should be enough to secure an incredibly important victory. Not least because Sunderland are the team who are top of the relegation zone. If this had gone the other way, it would start to look a bit horrible down there. But as it is, 10 points clear of the relegation zone at the halfway point of the season. We're actually... Oh, they've got one back. Um, we're actually closer to sixth place in a Europa League qualification spot than we are to the relegation zone, points-wise, as it stands right now. But obviously, because we're rubbish, we've let a goal go back to the way... And now we need to make sure that we don't go and throw away the match, as we've done so many times so far this season already. Right, we're going to bring... We just have so few fit strikers. I thought we had quite a good selection of strikers. I'm wondering if we perhaps need to bring a striker in. Rollheiser, for example. I don't know. He's a winger, really, I think. Although apparently he's a natural striker as well, but I'm not seeing that when he plays. Um, Adonis just needs to come off because he's rubbish. Lingard can come on and play. In fact, we'll swap those over. And put Onomar there, I think. And we'll leave it there for now. And Storaro's thinking, you just signed two right-backs. Why am I still playing at right-back? Look at the state of your midfield. You've literally got three wingers playing in central midfield. And I'm a central midfielder playing at right-back. Have you ever seen a football match before, Kev? We all know the answer to that. Just don't tell Storaro. Um, Onomar's going to come off now. Callum Wilson can come on, who apparently can play as an, a playmaker in behind the front too. Now, I, Callum Wilson is one of the few players in this Leicester squad I've seen play in real life. I'm fairly sure that man's not an attacking midfield player, but apparently he is in the future. Another example, a Rud Hullet example. He's gradually moving himself further back on the pitch. Give it two more seasons, he'll be our holding midfield player. Sun under in behind, but Panzo finally getting the opportunity to play at centre-back after being a left-back for so long. Just about intercepts and defends properly. I mean, it's a bit thanks to a big deflection. But let's not be downhearted. We've got four points from two matches in this episode. I think we'd have all taken that at the start of play today. And things are looking up again. Now I need to decide what to spend the rest of this money on. Midfielder or striker. Or maybe some more fullbacks. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.